So we have uh, Liz Parrish, um, founder and CEO of BioViva, a company uh, focused on developing gene therapies to treat biological aging. So Liz, um, to, to start with, maybe just tell us why exactly gene therapies? Why do you think they are so promising? Well, I think that gene therapies are so promising because they give us the ability to set it and forget it. And one of the hard things for patients to do is to follow through on taking their pills or their injections. Uh, we have a very low follow through rate and what we really need to do is help people be healthy and youthful at the cellular level so that they don't have to do all of these processes so also it gives us the ability to radically extend human health span and lifespan unlike other drug modalities okay so how did you actually get involved with uh, health and longevity so I got involved in health and longevity in 2013 after my son was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. I had spent a couple of years already studying regenerative medicine and I was surprised that it wasn't translating to the people who needed it, which were the patients. Um, so I became very emboldened uh, that I would become a patient advocate and that turned into me starting two different companies around gene therapy. So it was, it, the, what I ended up doing was very unexpected at the beginning. Uh, you're also patient zero, so to speak, for the first um, gene therapy to actually treat biological aging. Uh, you tested the gene therapy on yourself that you and your colleagues had spent two years developing. What contributed to this decision? Well, you know, when I came into the aging space, there were two very promising gene therapies. One of them was folistatin gene therapy, and it had been through uh, clinical trials. It had been through safety and efficacy for Becker's muscular dystrophy. And it showed a lot of hope for other myo uh, uh, muscle conditions. And uh, actually for an aging population, uh, most people suffer from what's called sarcopenia as they age. So this had a lot of promise and it already was safe and effective and that seemed great. Uh, but the other therapy was telomerase reverse transcriptase and at this point that was highly controversial therapy because it had extended the lifespan of mice several times. Uh, it had set nascent in research, no one was moving it forward. It had the most promise for extending human lifespan and um, but people were worried uh, that it might cause other issues or make people sick so it was I felt it was an imperative to move it forward and get human data all right so in your talk uh, you also mentioned um, the concept um, of best choice medicine um, what exactly is that well, okay, first and foremost, I'm a patient, right? So since I've gone on the patient journey and found out how hard it was to get access to these technologies and how hard it is for doctors to treat patients, um, I'm very in touch with uh, the fact that over 100,000 people die every day. So while we're sitting here, people are dying and they need access to these newer and more innovative and just better medicines. I mean, I'm completely sold that, you know, this is the future. And um, I wanted to create a pre-regulatory path in which governments could institute so that legally doctors can give access to patients and patients can get access to the medicine. And this just is something that doesn't exist these days. So um, this was really important to me. Um, why do you think is it that so few people are interested in longevity medicine given the gravity of the situation that it aims to address? And what do you think um, should be done about uh, the situation? What do you think is the best strategy to, to actually change that? Well, people think that dying of aging is natural and they tend to defer thinking about it until they get sick. And then at that point they panic and they spend a bunch of money treating the symptoms of their disease trying to stay alive. So I think that what we need to do is introduce the conversation, make it simpler for people to understand and help them project themselves into a future not of sick care, but in which they are healthy and which they can project themselves into what they will do in the next 30 years and, and how to get excited about that. I think that, you know, there's a lot of cognitive dissonance around aging, dying, and people not wanting to address it because it's a very uh, sad conversation. But if they understand the science and we can translate and educate them about new technology, about how exciting it is, and it's actually much more simple to understand these days. So, you know, if you go back to ancient times, you know, people 
scratched bark and and they got some sort of medicinal benefit from from you know willow um, taking away pain then medicine got really complicated and and actually some medicine we still don't even know how it works and um, you know that made it all seem very mysterious but now we're walking into a stage of gene and cell technology in which it's much easier to understand you know you can understand a gene creating a protein at the cellular level and that making your body healthier so I'm hoping that we can educate people about the new technology that will get them over the hump of being fearful of new technology we can get them to project their mind in the future of what they actually desire for themselves so they can see the next 30 years and then we need them to demand access to those technologies. Great, Liz, thanks for taking the time. Thanks for having me. <laughs>